Welcome back everybody to round five of the UK National Championships 2018. I'm still here with Matt Bell. Still awake. Still going. I've just had some bacon fries and we have Thomas Rose here in the feature match. Okay, segue. But yes, Thomas Rose, our uh, YCS Liverpool winner and commentator for YCS Prague, I believe. Was okay. it Prague? Can't remember. Maybe he bottom. was one of our commentators for a recent event. Uh, I think it was bottom, the largest event we had. Anyway. Tom uh, Rose yeah. is anyway, he was there. He was there. He was there. Well, uh, yeah, it was Buck. It was Buck. I can't remember the hotel. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he's playing something super interesting. Yes. Uh, he's going to be playing uh, Burning Abyss featuring Sekka's Light. So that's the spell card where after you activate it, you can activate any other spells. Apart from Sekka's Light. Apart from Sekka's Light. Yeah. And he's going to be playing 37 monsters, 3 spells in his lineup. Yeah. And um, he's actually playing Rescue Cat. Yes, uh, we might see that come into, come into play against uh, his opponent. Uh, I believe that's Carlio. Carlo? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to read the Carlo Watton. Carlo Watton. I'm trying to read the calligraphy on the deck list. Also, I just can't read. Yeah, most people try and write their deck lists in ancient Egyptian, which unfortunately we can't read. Yeah, it's, just, it's still better than my handwriting. Honestly. That is but true. he's playing the Trickstar Sky Striker deck, which is actually very likely to fall prey to a rescue cat in this uh, mm. in Tom's deck. Uh, but let's, I'm just taking a look to see if there's anything out of the ordinary. But this seems pretty standard. Uh, he's playing three copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, yeah, nothing particularly stands out as spicy. Okay. Well, let's leave that surprise for in the middle of the match and let's see what this craziness from Tom Rose can bring us. Let's go up to the table. So here we are. And there's the handshake. And we'll see how this goes. Um, Tom Rose played quite a few more tournaments. Wow, than, he's actually done a lot this color. season. Yeah. Uh, like, that 72% is also pretty high. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlo playing... Uh, Carlo is actually uh, lower, 46% uh, on his win percentage. Yep. But he's doing pretty well in the tournament. What's the record for these players for this tournament? Uh, this is X1. This is the X1 bracket at round yep. 5. Yeah, and uh, interestingly enough, so it's something we've had for all the players, but it's not come up yet. These guys have actually played before. Oh, okay. So you can give us uh, their actual match history. Yeah, so the, the match history for these guys um, in a regional in Newport. It was on the 10th of March this year, and Thomas Rose won. Oh, there you go. Actually, some fun facts. We were hoping that we can actually pull that out for you guys a little bit later if you want to see how some of the higher level players how many times they yeah. So they run into each other. Yeah, when we when we get to the the higher rounds, the, the guys who are top, you know, in the top cut, much more likely to have faced against each other. So yeah, I mean, we looked at Thomas Rose versus JY, and there was like three different matches that we managed to find that they, where they played over the season. So yeah, so Tom, uh, I don't think he will have elected to go second. So likely that he lost the die roll here. He might, have, he might have liked it to go second. He's playing something uh, pretty crazy. crazy. Yeah, we don't know. I like the emphasis on your crazy. <laughs> crazy! It's actually very similar to Hydro Is it? Oh, right. um, you, you didn't get to see the hand motion. But it was jazz hands. It was if jazz anybody wanted to imagine, crazy. imagine Luke doing jazz hands in the same match. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. So, passing over to Thomas Rose here. Let's see where this craziness goes. Well, he has a spell card in his hand, so we definitely know which one it is, because he's only playing one spell card. Someone's a rescue cat. Oh, let me. What? Let me what? Check this. How does this errata do? I, I actually can't remember how how rescue cat got errata. Um, rescue cat. Let's have a look. I think it's something like it gets banned. Like oh, I really can't. Remember. Um, they have their effects negated. Ah, you can only use the effect of rescue cat once per turn. Okay, and got Ash Blossom. You can send this card to the graveyard, special summon two level three, although a beast type monster from your deck, but they have their effects negated. Also, they're destroyed during the end phase. You can only use this effect of Rescue Cat once per turn. And you see two Burning Abyss monsters coming down after the Ash Blossom's been played, so that means that Sack of Light is definitely going to resolve. And it's your boy, Dante. Yeah. Oh, multiple Fafas being sent there. That's a Gallo gallus. actually gives away a lot of information. Yeah, that, that is quite a lot of information. <laughs> but I, I, I was, I was just, I was just gonna say, I don't think that Carlo is gonna know what Gallus the Star Beast is, and if he doesn't pick it up, then he definitely doesn't have the information. But he has, he quickly glanced at it then. I and think I, Gallus has been pretty well known from people that have played. Uh, for, yeah, for a long time. Over the years, but, but it's I don't know whether Carlo has played for a long time, so. It's hard to say. 
Gonna see Beatrice showing up here. Yeah, so there's Sekka's a light. Sekka's light. So the reminder is what Sekka's light does. Uh, draw two cards, and for the rest of the game, he can only, the only spell cards he can use are Sekka's light. Okay. I think it's spells or traps, actually. I think it's just literally the only... Um, yeah, the only back row that you're allowed to play is Sekka's light. Okay. Very strong card, though. It allows you to draw two cards. And uh, you can shuffle it from your graveyard. Oh, you can banish it from your graveyard. Yeah, it is, it is so both. Yeah, you banish it from your graveyard to reveal a monster in your hand and then shuffle it into your deck and draw a card. That's super cool. Snow's going into the deck, so that's actually going to make the Beatrice able to send Snow to the graveyard. That's super strong. So you get to exchange the Snow for another potential card. You see the grin coming up on Carly's face. Like, yeah. I see, think, it, I see where it is going. Just think how strong Galista Star Beast is. Oh, that's a Phoenix Rhino Warrior. That's pretty nice. And Tom spends a turn over to Carlo. And in case you're wondering, yes, Tommy is definitely playing Dante Pilgrim with the Burning Abyss. Uh, terraforming coming down for uh, another copy of Light Stage. As the Trick Stars go on tour. Yeah. What 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 um what are the names of all the Trick Star songs that they sing on the Light Stage, Matt? I don't know, but it makes my ears bleed 200 damage per turn. 400 if you can, full spell. Um, have you ever heard their um, their number one hit, Burn Baby Burn? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Luke, no, because they're playing cards. No. Trading cards, actually. I've yeah. heard I, 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 I've heard it before. Whoa, wow, that was awkward. I Showed his opponent on. an elephant. <laughs> yeah, just gonna elephant your uh, Candina. Sorry, can you? What? What? <laughs> what, what, you wow, wow, what is that? It's not an effect failure. Depends if you saw it. If you saw it, like technically, you can ask what that card does now because if he, if he has its name, he can ask for what it does. That's what it does. I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's how interesting. Does, uh, how does the Sky Striker Trickstar deck actually act the Beatrice? Because the Beatrice becomes it's pretty big. Uh, Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss, which is actually even harder for them to act because they can't. I believe Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss can't be targeted. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty amazing. I must say, the pilgrim is after his journey, his long journey, traveled through the burning abyss. He, uh, yeah, becomes untargetable. And Dante in attack mode. Okay. And the tour guide getting draw. So yeah, Dante pilgrim. You can send a burning abyss to draw a card and. Yeah, it can't be targeted by an opponent's card effect. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty strong. Sky Striker Nightmare it basically forces them to have the Utopia out to it, right? Yep. And Tom is leading with. Ah, okay, it's an alternate attack mode during the end phase. Uh, Tall guys. Guide. It's pretty nice. Graph. Good old Graf. And his effect is conveniently get negated by Togide, which stops him from destroying himself. All of the Burning Abyss monsters, uh, all of the regular effect monsters like, anyway. See, Tom, Tom, doesn't, Tom, Tom doesn't need Link monsters. He's no. quite content just uh, controlling all the XE monsters. Yep. Is that Cal Cab? I, I think that's Cal Cab, but I, I'm not 100%. No, I think that's the one that... Tends to spell trap back. Yeah, I think that is Cal Cap. But yeah, either way, it's the one that sends a spell on trap back. Which is really nice. Uh, I think you're right. Or is it Libic? Libic is. Libic's the one. Libic's the one from hand, yes, yeah, yeah it's Cal Cap. Oh, you said about the whole uh, not needing Link monsters, Matt. I think he does. Here he comes. Effect triggers. Just gonna get the Levick here. It's interesting. He gave up his uh, Beatrice. Um, yeah, that's Levick. He gave up his Beatrice, which was potentially turning into a untargetable uh, nightmare. 
Pilgrim with the Burning Abyss. So, a few more Link summons here. Yep. Few service. Let's uh, Tom discard a card. It's co-linked as well. Uh, the Phoenix Rhino. Let's take out a special summon monster, draw a card, and then he also has a Fiendish Rhino Warrior to then send a card from the deck to the, the graveyard. What's he going to take back? Looks like Sir's effect as well. Yeah, I think it's a question which, uh, which effect he used here. Dante's effect. Yeah, he's using Sir's effect as well. Yeah. Dante's effect. Bring back the Dante. Sir's. Take out the uh, life force. Yeah, and he <laughs> has to draw one. Wow, well that was a. And it's Gallus. Ah, uh, Gallus. Okay, this Rhino Warrior. That's super fun. That's so cool. <laughs> How did no one play Gallus in uh, in BA before? That is that is just genius. I guess the BA monsters blow themselves up if they. Yeah. Gallus is on the field, but. That's Barbar. And that's gonna be uh, 900 points of points damage. Yeah. Damage. That's real good. We, he's, he's getting through all of the Burning Abyss effects. That was always the strongest part about Burning Abyss, is if you could essentially cycle the major effects, Skarm, Seer, and Gaff. Graff. Uh, Graff. Why is that when we get the Gaff? The Gaff. We're going to get Gaff. We're going to get the monsters get Gaff. from the Gaff. Um, he, to, to just keep cycling those important effects repeatedly, uh, you were just getting miles and miles and miles ahead on uh, card advantage. Uh, so yeah, Nightmare Service is now preventing monsters from being destroyed by card effects. Um, can you pull out the text for Underclock Taker? I know it's a popular choice. I don't know if the effect was used there, to be honest. Two. Yeah, we're going to see Nightmare Unicorn. The unicorn just lets another card get discarded. Send another card away. Elephant. Card. This has been a long turn considering it's Burning Abyss. I remember when Burning Abyss used to do one thing, make a Dante, hit with Dante, that's it. Now it makes nightmares. Yeah. Gallus, that is almost certainly going to resolve. Yeah, so he flips over the top card of his deck. If it's a monster, then he takes damage, the, his opponent takes damage. He cuts it 200 times the level, level of the monster. And then Gallus gets the special summon itself. And then he might go for Nightmare Phoenix. Yeah, so wow. that's 600 damage. Yeah. Then he could make uh, Nightmare Phoenix, and then he has his monsters can't be destroyed by battle, card effects, and Tom's going to draw three cards next turn. Yeah, that seems good. <laughs> now, of course, this is after like a significant number of direct attacks. Yeah, that is quite a lot of damage. That's 1800 plus the service, and then Unicorn. Yeah, that's enough. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, okay, 19, my 19, mind's 23, a little bit blown. 25, yeah. Well, Tom is a very strong player. We have seen him on the circuit for a very long time. Uh, he has proven his success. He's very much adamant that playing the best deck in the format is not uh, not ideal. Yeah, another way to win. Yeah. Underclock Taker, can you get the card text up for that? Yep, so it's uh, once per turn you can target a face-up monster this card points to on one face-up card your opponent controls. The opponent's target loses attack. Yeah, so the other card. the attack of the monster it pointed to. Yeah. Okay. So, so you can make it. Yeah, yeah, okay, so you can run over things. Yeah. Um, but the down arrow is the important part there. But yeah, yeah. Tom, uh, as we said, he almost always refuses to play what's the top meta deck. Yeah. Um, because he says that the best best odds you're going to get is 60, 60 40, and 60 40 doesn't lead with, you, lead with topping. No. So best to play something completely off the wall that just smashes the top deck. Yeah. He's an excellent deck builder, honestly. Um, he's always looking for the weirdest stuff uh, in, in his choices. Uh, very, very strong player. Yeah, I was speaking to Tom before this round, and he said that uh, he actually played against JY yesterday in a winner mat final, and JY then helped him to finish the deck. Well, gave him some advice on different things to potentially put in the deck. Uh, uh, Tom won that match, didn't he? Uh, no, actually, he got, oh, yes, he he got wrecked. Yeah. Oh, he got destroyed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, real bad. <laughs> wow. Um, I but how... JY was playing the 60 card craziness. Yeah, uh, I wonder how he's getting on in the tournament, actually. I can have a look. Let's see which table he's on. 
Uh, Carlo, take, let's have, take a look at Carlo's deck, actually. Um, GY's currently on table 113. So, what, uh, you don't have his record there, though, right? So it's what, X1, no. X2? Yeah, maybe X1, X2. Probably X1. What table is this match? Uh... 63. Uh, so actually, yeah, that could uh, be X2. He's probably X11 because he drew yeah. him in the match we saw him on. Yeah, yeah, X11 makes the most sense actually. Um, now he can't lose. Carlo evenly matched, shared by mining control. Well, mining control probably. Mining control nightmare monsters. You can get them, get rid of them that way. When uh, typhoon when and mine control. Well, typhoon's definitely not going in. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a safe bet. Is uh, is Tom playing any spells and traps in the? In the side deck, or is uh, he he's really playing three copies of Magic Deflector, two copies of Anti Spell Fragrance, Imperial Order? So he is playing quite a bit. Okay, I wonder how he deals with that with with Sekka's Light. Probably brings the Sekka's Lights out, to be honest, and it just puts in the I Win cards against uh, against that matchup. Yeah, but we'll see when uh, when he pulls it off. All right, so let's see who uh, Carlo decides he's going to go first here. Uh, also, Tom. Wow. Probably bring in. Uh, that one. is possibly the best hand for Thomas Rose. He has two hand traps. Okay, yeah. That I mean, that's generally what you. It's kind of establishes the strongest hands is two in, two interrupts followed uh, and a follow up. Yeah. Uh, is usually enough to get you there. Draw. And draw gets turns ended. And actually, Tom Stack plays enough aggressive special summons. Uh, to close a game out. Yep. Carlo has an Ash though, if uh, Thomas is able to play around that. It does look like he's got two Sekka's Lights in his hand. Actually, no, 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 one of them's the Ritual Monster, my bad. Oh, yes. Uh, what's the card name again? It's uh, the Ancient and Ascended. Severus or something like that. Uh, I, honestly, his writing is so small. I think it's uh, Soros? Yeah, Sauravis. Sauravis. Sauravis, the Ancient and Ascended. Ascended. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he is, well, he definitely is. There's no possible way for him to summon it in this deck. He's he's playing it with um, just the sheer fact that it's a hand trap. Uh, yeah, you can discard it to negate a targeting effect. Yeah. And yep, Kagari being summoned. And Tommy rolls another Ash Blossom. Uh, Psycho's Light. Yep, he's just going to see if his opponent has the Ash Blossom. Does that? Oh yeah, okay. I keep, I keep thinking Tom's I have is but abysmal. Yeah, it really is. Borderline unplayable. But he gets a chance to put one of those Ash Blossoms back. And uh, yeah, don't need two of those. Get himself. Uh, if he has any Burning Abyss monster, he's then in with Dante and can start like doing making stuff. plays. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot that he could uh, he could get off the top. He's got a pair it with the Seer though. It's Gallus. Yeah. So that's not great because Seer's gonna uh, pop could, himself. He could worst. Worst case, Gallus um, Ash Blossom. Oh, there's wow. a Phoenix Rhino. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, just uh, it wor things work out. The yeah. same things work out. Uh, I don't know what Carlo has set actually. I didn't see his opening hand. Um, didn't catch it. It's uh, Petsman's. Oh, okay. I don't know if that was entirely worth it. Okay, yeah, the Finnish Rhino is going to send Skarm to the graveyard. Probably see, yeah, the normal summon of the Ash Blossom becomes a Dante. And thanks to that up arrow coming from Carlo, uh, Tom doesn't even need to use his extra monster zone to do it. So here's the fun thing, he can go for his Dante effect, and then if Carlo actually does negate it, um, you can just go straight up into Beatrice. Oh, Gra Graf! Graf! <laughs> oh, Graf and the Dante! That was always one of the best things. And a Sekka's Light as well. Um, yeah. I think those are ones per turn though. Uh, let me double check. Um, 
Tom's coming up with. Yeah, you can only use each effect of second light special. Right, Kalap. 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 Yes, Kalap's the one uh, sent back the back of the hand. Yep, and. Link so something? Gonna go up to a Link Monster. Yeah, we're going to see uh, Phoenix. Just got him to see And then lots of effects to be resolved. So, Calcab, Sia, Dante. It's all going on right now. Uh, I think the Calcab was special. Oh, no, it summoned from the graph. So, yeah, there's, uh, that's the background getting cleared. Yep, just confirming it was, uh, it's legal activation. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Widow Anchor getting taken out and the permanent's going back to his hand, but he can't play it because he currently controls the monster. Yep. And then Sia's effect got Third back Dante. Boy, Dante. And then Dante's effect got back Graf. Wow. Discard the Graf to go up to Beatrice. Yeah. Got to move it over to that monster zone that's got an arrow pointing to it. You could have used the extra monster zone as well. The other monster zone, but you just chose this doesn't need to. Um, may as well keep it just in yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, keep it, keep it free. And that Beatrice can't be destroyed in battle. Not that you really want to be clearing out a Beatrice, to be honest. No. No, you got to deal with Beatrice in, a, I don't know, some way. You want to tribute her with, because uh, it's when she sends a good by a card effect, I believe. Yeah. It's been a little while since I've seen her. Yeah, let's take a look. I do know that the German version of the card text required us to specifically create <laughs> yeah. a format to write the card because the text was too long. Uh, Talk guy from the Underworld. Being added from the Skarm effect earlier in the turn. Okay, Carlo has a, a mitt of cards. Uh, let's see where he goes from here. But the problem is he has to answer a dangerous threat uh, that just simply comes back with an even stronger threat. Yeah, Beatrice is... Uh, is destroyed by, by your opponent's card, by battle or card effect. Yeah, so yeah, you want to yeah. try to do those away. Yeah. Uh, if you got the Winged Dragons of Raw Sphere mode, so you could be coming in from... Yeah, that works. Uh, Carly's not playing Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere mode, that's Tom's deck list, so I'm just going to swap those around. It's actually weird, because when we look at the cast in the game in front of us, if I have the deck list reversed, I get confused. Yeah, I get confused as well. You're in charge of deck lists this event, though, so you got them both. No, I, okay, yeah, I need to be better. I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Way to put the boot in. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Sorry, that was it. <laughs> okay, this is Fikari, and we're going to see if uh, this one goes through. Engage. Sky Striker mobilizing engage. Uh, going to be able to search for an additional card, and I believe that's three spells in grave, or is that just two since he took one out? Mm, it's pro probably three, I believe. I feel like that's that's going to get negated by the ancient one, isn't it? Uh, if it targets, yeah. For sure, it targets. Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that the monster effect targets the spell and trap removal effect does not target. Uh, jamming yeah. waves targets the set spell and trap, but doesn't target the monster. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought for a second that jamming waves had been left in Carly's deck, and I was going to be shocked. No, oh, you got you got afterburner. Yeah, after afterburner um, targets monsters. Yes. So we probably could take out the. He could take out the nightmare. From That's what I'm saying. Tom, Tom's got the ancient one in his hand. Yeah. He can get it. He can. I think. <laughs> Pretty sure he can. Yeah, it's just card or effect that targets a monster. Wow, that's so strong. Yeah, I remember seeing that when it came out, and I thought that it was super strong, but there's never, there's never been a good application for it. It's always just been kind of like when you consider the other options that are available to players. Yeah. Um, there's always something better. Yeah, like. You could be playing Infinite Impermanence, uh, you could have been playing Ash Blossom to stop their act, like stop their search, you could be playing Ghost Over, which destroys a monster. Oh, okay, so um, perhaps Carlo is now trying to consider if he can get a Firewall OTK free, but we know that's not going to happen because um, Beatrice can get Farfa and yeah. remove the Firewall Dragon. 
Actual fact, he, I don't think he can get to it from here anyway, to be honest. No. Yeah. yeah. I guess he's just going to get rid of the Lily Bell and have it done with. Fairytale Snow. Okay, that works. That actually probably works better. Uh, yep, I like that back from Dante, and then snow effect. Yeah, basically, it's all very good. <laughs> One, two. You burning abyss four, monsters as he can possibly get away five. with. Definitely not sec as light. <laughs> Six, and then seven. Yeah, and then the fairy tale snow. That's gonna set down the lily bell. Yep. I'm surprised that Carlo didn't. Well, obviously, he had. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, then uh, Carlo's considering his life force. Yep. Yeah. It's not looking good for Carlo here. <laughs> no, the fox actually is getting pretty thin as well as we come up to the 15 minutes remaining mark. I'm a little sad that we didn't get to see Thomas's uh, one big, co like the the big complete stoppage combo that he has for the Sky Striker deck. Right? We can yeah, I think he actually only. I'm not sure if he's just playing that against the Star Striker Pure, but essentially he's just using Rescue Cat to make a one card material beast. Yep. <laughs> and then saying, yeah, that should get me there. And protecting it with the Ancient One. Yeah. Plus, then he's sending cards until his deck into the graveyard, which is just like fueling. Yeah, burning fuel. Yeah. Burning <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna negate your spell card and summon a bunch of burning abyss monsters. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just got a bunch of triggers. Whatever, whatever that may be, it's all, it's all pure profit at that point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think Carlos becoming to the realization that he can't do anything. Yeah, he's passed. Ship the turn back, and Holmes gonna take some damage. Yeah, he managed to at least do some damage. Oh, Black Cluster Soldier. Um, I, haven't seen that, I haven't seen that boy in a while. Yeah. He uh, he has a big grin on his face as he takes away like two of your cards and most of your life points. Yeah. Who who would win? A bunch of Trek stars or one Chaos Boy? You're so full of memes. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Infinite Impermanence. Yep. Uh, uh, nope. He, he, can you play the ancient one on that? Pretty sure you can. He can. Yeah. Tom's booking it. Yeah, he's, he's like, definitely yeah. gonna read that. He's like, you just, yeah. you just use, you just use a ritual monster as a hand trap. This is complete. You negated my trap with, uh, with another hand trap. Oh. <laughs> this is definitely the first time we've seen this been played in, in in the live stream. I can tell you that now. See, I, I, I don't want to sound like we're giving unfavorable bias to Tom because we are being a little bit biased, unfortunately. But it's just well, you gotta call it how I you think see it's the it. Deck. Right? Look at I the think it's the deck that we're giving unfavorable bias to. Yeah, and it's actually, I, I think Carlo's deck is actually quite ill-suited to deal with uh, Beatrice and uh, Pilgrim, and it's not even come up yet. Um, the sheer amount of ways that Tom has been able to continue playing, even if there is some sort of form of interaction from his opponent, is uh, not allowing Carlo to get his fast damage, uh, get any fast damage through. Yeah. Tom's sitting very healthy, only taking 400 damage. Just, uh, That's just from Lycoris. Did he even take any damage last game? I don't think so. <laughs> I think the only damage he's taken is uh, these few bits from Lycoris. I, I think Tom Rose just had the realization of I have so many options at this point that I don't know what to do. <laughs> Probably start doing some nightmare shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, you just have so many options. It's hard to. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell where you should go. <laughs> Yep, service. Uh, service is going to allow a discard, and that's going to be able to clear out the Lycoris. We we'll have to get back down to with Sir. Yep. This is just, this is just manic. I've just realised as well that the ancient one's light, so that's what he can use for. Uh, oh, so now he has his material for his Black Lizard Soldier. I was like, yeah. he doesn't have to go off his Dante. Yeah. Oh, and uh, we're going to see um, Farfa taking yeah. uh, taking out another card. They just won't go away, will they? The Burning Abyss. No, they are, no. <laughs> they are eternal. Guys. You can tell that guy who like went all in on the set they released, Jules Alliance, and was like, "Oh yeah, 
I did well on this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, one, yeah. This was a good call. Yeah, I mean, that's... and he's got enough food for snow as well. Again, there's unicorn. This is just insanity. I think at this point, Carlo just wants to see it, just like we do, just to see where he can get to with this. I can't believe he's been giving it a good shot, but like, just look at that field he set up. He had the he had the Candina. He was trying to get. He couldn't get this to start off. Not only that, his two back rows were actually dealt with efficiently. There <laughs> we go, BLS. And. Uh, and Thomas was able to set up a ridiculous field. So, is it, like, here we go. Oh, he's discarded yeah. the Black Master Soldier for the Unicorn to shuffle yeah. back. Oh, shame. Uh, is, he, is he playing more than one Black Luster? I think he probably is. Um, Black Luster Soldier. There's a lot of monsters in this category. Give me a second. Yeah, he's playing three coffers. Yep. Uh, he's going to use Sucker's Light. Yeah, I don't like this card I drew. I'm gonna go find a new one. That's just that's just so good. And that deck looks pretty thin. Yeah, there's not a lot left. I was gonna say that's the Alice. <laughs> that's what he was hoping for. I think he drew the same card. Oh, it's Gallus. Ah, oh, it's Gallus. Throw. Oh, like 200. 200 damage. <laughs> Still, every little helps. Yeah, there's only 4 7 left on uh, Carly's life total anyway. This is just. What what a game. <laughs> He's got snow as well. Yep, snow, so he can. Just a ladder. Yeah, all the burning. I think the whole burning in base engine just got. Just got banished. Oh, let's go for a note. Yeah. Gallus can get right, over yeah. it and then just swing for something like a lot. <laughs> like the answer is just nine k damage. I think it's plenty. Yep. And yeah, after Bruno and Lily Bell, not going to get the job done. Wow. Just. I feel bad for Carly because he honestly, he set up going trapped. Okay. Still had a play to then stop his opponent set up and just Thomas is like, I just play everything. Yeah. Look at his DC is opening hand. Dante. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We should talk about this in our personalized discussion. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm back. Yeah. Wow, that was a that was an excellent showing from Tom Rose. I, I just, I, <laughs> he turned a really abysmal hand in straight into so much action. Yeah, it just seemed like you were watching like miracles being played out. It was just insane. That was so good. Yeah, I, I was uh, really impressed by seeing Sakura's Light actually yeah. coming out for, for the fans back home looking for alternatives in the format. That was the rogue taking out the uh, the monster in the room. Um, yeah, he was clearly desperate for the... Uh, and that was on really a bad hand in that second game. And it just like, the cards kept flowing, the cards kept flowing. That was yep. so strong. Again, Stephen Carlo, it wasn't even like Carlo ended up with a bad start. He had Ash Blossom, yeah, he had, he had his, a, a setup, he had a, a way yeah. for following up on his opponent's turn. That was a really strong start from Carlo. Yeah. And, and, it just fell apart. Yeah, well, Thomas Rose clearly was too eager for the for the traditional tournament we have tomorrow. He just wanted to play Pot of Greed. <laughs> so he decides to play three copies of Sekers Light. Sec light I don't even have to buy him 10 cards. This is yeah. maximum profit. Yeah. I, I like the hand fixing ability as well, allowing us to just put that, uh, like that an one extra card Ash Blossom for, back yeah. and then it just all of a sudden was turned his whole hand into like more yeah. action. Yeah. It's uh, That was just one one card different that, that completely changed the way that his hand worked there. Ah, it was, uh, and then we, we had the Dante pulling off some more miracles. Yeah, Burning Abyss are just so, so strong. Yeah, well, they uh, they keep coming back and uh, with a strong pilot, we can definitely see them progressing well in the tournament on a 4-1 record. Yeah. Um, that's perhaps even could hit the top, top cut, considering like if it's playing through that, like, well, the, the, you, you guys at home, you saw teeth, the, right? the, yeah, you saw the strength of that deck just now. That wasn't like it was. I mean, that that final game, it wasn't like that was a struggle to win. That was overkill at that point. Yeah, and like I, again, I just I do want to stress it, Carlo. Uh, he yeah played he, it as he, he should. He played yeah. it as he should. He didn't exactly make a glaring mistake that I saw. No, no. And he he still uh, with with his disruption just wasn't good enough. Yeah. But so, uh, we should be having an interview with uh, Tom in just a second, so you guys can uh, hear from the, the master himself uh, yeah. exactly why he chose to play this. And some he may or may not be pulling funny faces at us. Yeah, he's trying to put us off. Uh, yeah. It's just a regular joker. So, um, 
Yeah. We'll just give the boys a second while they are preparing themselves. I figure it out. Yeah. I was that your favorite feature match so far, or did you? Yeah, I think ninjas? so. I, well, I, I, I kind of like ninjas. Mm, yeah, I kind of like the ninjas. That was, as that well. was really good too. But let's let's hear it from man himself. Let's uh, let's go over to Robert and uh, have a chat with Tom Rose. Hello, everybody. We're back with the winner of our feature match, Thomas Rose. Now, that I'd only saw the tail end of that game because I was just doing something else. But it, it, you know, to be honest with you, the entire game kind of looked disgusting. Now, you're playing Burning Abyss. Um, why are you playing Burning Abyss? Uh, because I like playing silly decks and seeing if they work. Uh, some people who might have been at Liverpool will know I have a soft spot for Burning Abyss. And I'd, I'd like to say sorry to anyone that actually knows how to play Burning Abyss for absolutely butchering that final turn. I missed so many triggers, I missed so many lethals, but it's okay because it didn't matter, right? <laughs> I, I know you want you you really wanted to kind of just apologize for it, and you were going, just before we came into this interview, you were like, oh, I'm so embarrassed, I could have done so many things, I hope people are watching the stream with sound, just so I can explain how sorry I am. <laughs> oh, so, um, what have you gone against so far before this match? Uh, so far today, I've played against... Uh, that, that was my third Trickstar Sky Striker match. Uh, I lost to one of those and I've beaten two now. And I beat a guy playing Heroes in round one, but I think it was his first tier two event, so it was just a nice ease into the event for me. Yeah. Uh, so, so far out of all the games that you've played, what's your favorite play you've done so far? Um, I had a game against one of my other Trickstar Sky Striker opponents where uh, I had a Naturia Beast up, and obviously Naturia Beast really good for locking them down, hold them out of the game, they can't use their spells. But the trouble is, it doesn't actually end the game fast enough. It's only got 2200 attack, and a lot of my monsters uh, either don't have attack points because they're the hand traps, or they're burning Abyss cards, and they will destroy themselves when Beast's on the field. Uh, so in that game, uh, I was summoning a Gallus from my hand to try and push some extra damage and just shorten the clock. Uh, Milda Farfa sat there and thought for a while, I was like, okay, banish one of your guys, and then in the end I decided, no, I'll banish my own Naturia Beast, because he didn't have anything set that was going to be threatening me at that point, and it just takes out the extra monster zone, lets me start making rank 3 plays, and then in the end phase, it'll come back and continue to lock down the spells. So that was pretty good. Very, very smart play. Definitely. And I'm assuming it paid off for you at that point as well. Yeah, yeah. Won that one. Definitely. Now, you, a lot of people have been playtesting a lot of different decks. Now, you say you like to see if funny decks work. Is there any other, other deck that you were considering for this event? Traditional format. It's just the traditional format. We do have the traditional <laughs> format happening. Are you going to be playing in the traditional format? Uh, I mean, it's looking worryingly like I might not. If Burning Abyss goes well, <laughs> I might feel obliged to continue playing of in the course, main event. Of but course, of course. Like, but if you were going to play in the traditional event, what's your kind of pick, do you think? Because um, we don't really know what's going to be going on. Because there's like, the field's kind of a bit different because there's a lot of kind of interaction now in your opponent's turn. To, to kind of try and shut down some combos that may be happening from the traditional FTK yeah. decks that we, we've seen. Yeah, um, I may still end up in the tournament, so I don't want to. want to say? I don't want to spill the say. spice at this point, no, but I, cool. I, I don't. Understand I that. don't think that a traditional one-track FTK is viable at the moment. Okay. Uh, you'll just face too many hand traps. No, that's completely completely understandable. Completely understandable. Now, um, fantastic game. Thank you very much for coming on. Hopefully we'll see you in the finals if all things still go well. <laughs> hey, would you like to? Thanks to uh, all my friends for testing with me and to my girlfriend for being really good and testing card games with me, even though she doesn't like card games that much, but she's great. Brilliant, thank you very much. Now we're gonna head back over to your presenters. There you hear it from the man himself. That was that was an adorable interview. It, it was. It was. He, uh, he he was not going to allow himself to leave without saying thank you to everybody. That was nice. Yeah, it's always it's always nice to see that uh, level of enthusiasm as yeah. well. I'm a little bit upset he didn't tell us what he was going to play for traditional though. No, I've learned. I've, that's my I think my favorite expression so far is I'm not going to spill the spice. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that amazing. that was that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. I like it. I like that as a as a way of def uh, 
defining that, yeah. keeping cool. the secrets. Yeah, I'm going to try and remember that for tomorrow, and I'm going to say it sometime during the traditional no, you finals. Can't, you, can't, you can't use it now. You've got to wait a couple of weeks until people have forgotten about it, and then you can then use it again. It's your joke. And okay. It's fine. That's, All right. just, that's just how comedy works, I've been told. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, well, we, I don't think we've spoke too much about it. What do you th I actually spoke to a couple of um, world's competitors who happen to be in the venue. Um, about the traditional, and we were really going back and forwards trying to figure out what what's going to win it. What 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 do you think is going to actually win? Uh, actual winning, I it's difficult because some of the old powerhouse cards have actually been eroded at this point. So it's not like you can do some crazy stuff with Chaos Emperor Dragon like yep. you would expect. Um, I'd really, I don't know. I'd really like to see some stuff like maybe Burning Abyss with Graceful Charity, Painful Choice. Um, mm -hmm. I think that could be super strong uh, as your engine if you were not deciding to play uh, some FTK. Um, I don't know. It's such a it's it's hard to say. You can play wind ups if you really wanted to with all the with the link monster yeah. Zen carrier, Zen mighty. Sorry, um, yeah. that's a potential option. Probably a little bit too slow because you but you can go Shockmaster. Yeah, and Shockmaster is pretty good. Yeah. So we, yeah, we we were going around in circles and circles and circles, and, and we just kept kind of every time we thought of a deck, we thought of another card on the forbidden list that was going to help not let that deck be the best and yeah they you know so it was a lorenzo roma who's, who's actually here and he eventually came to the conclusion that exodia is going to win yeah exodia well, usually you, gets the job done well um, but the, the big thing with that is drawn lockbird is yeah. is you know it's a well, finisher to that deck i guess unless you, you play gammas you're gonna have to be playing yeah gammas or you don't really want to be playing wabaku in that deck if you're going for an exodia ftk in traditional no. Um, but maybe you just have to kind of consider that if you need to get through a turn, but then there's no guarantees that your opponent's just not going to do some kind of burn FDK on you. Yeah, exactly. It's difficult. It's really difficult. I'm Ch can you chain burn FDK? Probably. Like, tremendous fires and stuff like that. Yeah, then, probably. Uh, draw a bunch of cards. It's potential. Yeah, maybe. That would be, be funny, right? A really like, filthy chain burn traditional deck. Yeah, that could work. Anyway, so that's it for our feature match. Um, the, the Burning Abyss deck was really cool to see. Yes, and I wanted to give a special uh, shout out to Carlo. I think uh, he did what he could with that match. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it did know. not go his way. That was uh, that was unfortunate for him. No. But so that's it for round five. We're going to be right back with round six of the UK National Championships 2018. Stick around.